This is Earth in 800 years, or perhaps in half a century, or even in a year. And that's not science fiction. If some known asteroids hit it, our planet can really get rings like those around Saturn. What's more, in the distant past, Earth already had them. And not only once. In this video, you'll find out where do planets get such space accessories from? Why do we owe our lives to the rings of Earth? And why wouldn't you want our planet to have them back soon? First, let's see how they affected life on Earth in the distant past. Today, most scientists believe that 4.5 billion years ago, Earth went through a giant impact, a massive collision with planet Theia. As a result, large numbers of fragments entered orbit and formed a thick, hot ring that kept showering Earth with meteorites for millions of years. However, most of the fragments stayed up and eventually turned into the Moon. Many scientists think that those meteorite impacts and the tidal force caused by the Moon were some of the key factors that determined the beginning of life. Subsequently, the rings also influenced the way it developed. But how? In 1980, American astronomer John O'Keefe shared one very unusual theory that was published in Nature magazine. 34 million years ago, it suddenly got cold on Earth. The Ice Age started and led to mass extinction. But if it was an asteroid impact that had killed dinosaurs 30 million years before that, mammals of that era were wiped out by the orbital rings. If these formations up in the sky consisted of light minerals, they reflected a lot of sunlight. And that's why the planet quickly got covered with ice. In a million years or so, the rings fell apart and rained down like a meteor shower. Exploring soil layers of that period, geologists even found abnormal tektite deposits, charred meteorite fragments. If O'Keefe's right, these rings of Earth have radically changed flora and fauna of our planet. Its surface became so uncomfortable for living that ancestors of modern whales went under the sea entirely and many other mammals became extinct. That ancient ice formation cleared Earth for early primates, including the species modern humans descended from. So, despite the fact that the first rings disappeared from the Earth's orbit a long time ago, they anyway deserve a little appreciation for giving you a chance to exist and, say, watch this video. But what needs to happen to make some new rings emerge around the Earth? In fact, they're already here, like right now. In the early 90s, scientists from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, owned by NASA, found some peculiar particle beams in our planet's orbit. These tiny and pretty sparse specks of dust formed several rings at 600 kilometers above the ground. All planets, and even the Moon, may have something similar around their bodies. But we want to see some spectacular rings in the sky like those of Saturn, right? This gas giant put them on around 100 million years ago. According to one modern theory, a comet hit Saturn's icy satellite and knocked it out of its orbit. And so this poor celestial body reached the lethal point of no return, the Roche limit. That's the height above the ground of a planet at which its gravity tears any large object to pieces. The Roche limit for Earth is 9,500 kilometers. If anything makes the Moon swing that close, it'll crumble and form rings. But if we don't want to be buried under its debris, we've got only one option. This asteroid with a complex codename is more than three kilometers in diameter. Sometimes it flies so close to us that it passes between the Earth and the Moon. And there are about a thousand things in our solar system that could push the asteroid even farther to the Roche limit. The nearest date when a thing like this may theoretically happen is November the 21st, 2022. But fear not, there won't be any apocalypse. The asteroid won't hit Earth, it'll just come apart on its way. And then wide rings will emerge around our planet. But what exactly will they look like? Well, definitely not so vibrant as those around Saturn. Its rings aren't just much bigger, they're mostly made of ice that can perfectly reflect the light. Saturn lies almost 10 times farther from the Sun than Earth, so the ice that creates this beautiful sight doesn't melt. Speaking of Earth's orbit, it's too hot up there. 
That's why I've chosen a stony asteroid instead of an icy comet as the foundation for the rings. Nonetheless, astronomers have estimated that even rocks in Earth's orbit will reflect as much light as if every square meter of the rings is equipped with a 130-watt light bulb. And that'll look simply fantastic to those watching from the ground. Illustrators Ron Miller and Kevin Gill took real photos taken worldwide and added planetary rings to all of them. Since such rings always line up right along the equator of a planet, most of the global population will be marveling at the view of a giant arch in the sky to the north and south, day and night. People living in polar regions will see only a tip of the space arch. And if you find yourself right at the equator, you'll be stunned by a huge line crossing the whole sky above your head. Almost all the planet will turn into one big set for making awesome pictures and videos. However, every six months, it'll look like Mexico, the way it's shown in American movies. I mean, as if somebody applied a dim orange filter. But what does that have to do with the rings? A similar phenomenon can be seen at sunset, when sunlight passes through a much thicker layer of the atmosphere than during the day. Rays are scattered, so the sun looks faint and orange-red. Now imagine that you live in New York. In this city, the sun rises and sets on the southern side throughout the winter, so it'll be constantly blocked by the rings of Earth. Every hour of every day will be full of red-orange light that the setting sun usually produces. Only this time, it'll be even duller, as you'll be trapped in a giant shadow. Street lamps of New York and other cities will have to stay turned on all winter, but overuse of electricity will be the least of our worries. Disastrous consequences can the rings of Earth lead to. Since they reflect a lot of light and cast giant shadows on Earth, our winters will become nearly twice as cold as they are now. What's worse, some world regions may become uninhabitable for humans in just a few years. New mass extinction of terrestrial and marine plants will lead to atmospheric oxygen levels going down. But the necessity to always wear warm ski suits and oxygen masks isn't the worst of the gifts that the beautiful rings will have for us. Every single day, the moon's gravity will be pulling fragments out of them, and they'll go straight down like meteor showers. And you'll have to protect your head not only from rocks, but also from artificial satellites. Remember I told you that the rings always line up along the equator. That's where most of our space vehicles are located. The ones used for communication, navigation, meteorological observations, and so on. And when the ground equipment freezes completely, there'll be neither mobile communication nor the internet. Well, NASA will launch new satellites to restore communications then, won't it? No such luck. The rings in the sky aren't just lovely scenery, they're an insurmountable barrier for orbital flights. Most spaceports have been built close to the equator so that the Earth's rotation would help the rockets climb up. So as soon as a new satellite leaves the atmosphere, it'll be immediately destroyed by ring fragments. NASA will have to rename itself NAA as the space word will be no longer relevant. This siege will last at least several thousand years, until all the fragments fall from orbit to the frozen surface of the Earth. So, do you still want to see those rings in the sky? And still, we seem to be doing our best to make them line up already. The European Space Agency has estimated that over half a century, more than 170 million pieces have fallen off various spacecraft and piled up in the Earth's orbit. If we keep this up and don't clean the mess, we'll see rings of garbage eventually emerging around our planet. 